200 times sweeter than sugar, aspartame is used in everything from diet soda to yoghurt, even chewable vitamins. The US Food and Drug Administration says the sweetener is one of the most studied food additives and still finds it can be safely used. But aspartame hasn't been without controversy. Today's reports, which suggest the sweetener could be labelled possibly carcinogenic, refer to the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer. That group is due to report on aspartame in two weeks' time. And the IARC rates substances potential to cause cancer like this. At the top are things we know to be carcinogenic to humans, things like tobacco, alcohol and sun exposure. Then there are things that are probably carcinogenic. And below that, and this is where sources told Reuters aspartame may be placed, are things that are possibly carcinogenic. Other things in this category include pickled vegetables, carpentry and exposure while working as a dry cleaner. Now, to be classed as possibly carcinogenic, there only needs to be limited evidence of the substance having cancer-causing properties in humans and less than sufficient evidence in animals. So let's look for less than sufficient animal evidence first. In the early 2000s, Italian researchers fed mice high levels of aspartame and some more than 50 times the recommended human dose. They concluded more of those mice experienced malignant tumours, but the cause of those lesions was questioned. And in 2009, the European Food Safety Authority examined this research and still found there was no indication of any carcinogenic potential from the sweetener. So what about aspartame's impact on humans then? Well, several studies have failed to find a link between artificially sweetened drink consumption and cancer. But last year, a French study, which included more than 100,000 people, looked at sweetener consumption over the entirety of people's diets. And they found those who consumed more than average aspartame were 1.15 times more likely to develop cancer compared to people who didn't consume any. Now, that is a very small finding, but it could be that the group considers studies like this limited evidence. There is, however, another bigger issue here. Let's go back to the rating system. What's important to help us decide whether to smoke a known carcinogen or work night shifts, which is probably carcinogenic, isn't just the fact that a hazard exists. It's the level of risk involved that matters, how likely that hazard is to actually happen. And this isn't designed to tell us that at all. What will help unpick aspartame's risk is that in two weeks, another World Health Organization committee, the Expert Committee on Food Additives, will also set out their findings. They do look at these questions and set out recommendations for how much a person should consume. In fact, they already made a recommendation back in the 80s. That was people should consume no more than 40 milligrams of aspartame per kilogram of body weight per day. And a quick back of an envelope calculation tells us that limit would allow the average British woman at least 14 cans of leading diet soda every day. Now, we won't know until the 14th of July whether that recommendation will change. But today, the Deputy Chief Scientific Advisor for the Food Standards Agency said aspartame is considered safe at current permitted use levels.